In my opinion, AMD absolutely won Computex when they announced that their Ryzen 5000 series APUs are gonna be sold directly to the consumer. This is a big step up over the hassles you had to go through in order to get their previous APUs, like the 4750G that I had to order all the way from Hong Kong on eBay and waited three weeks for it to arrive, or like the 5600G, which I had to spend $1,300 on a Best Buy pre-built with an RTX 3060 to even get the chip, or like the subject of today's video, the Ryzen 7 5700G, when I had to head over to Office Depot and pick up one of their HP Pavilion systems for only $550 this time because they didn't sell it with the GPU, thankfully, but AMD selling it for $359 directly to the consumer on August 5th is a huge win for everybody. The Ryzen 5 5600G is gonna be sold for $259, and I cannot be more ecstatic. We haven't had them sell an APU direct to consumer ever since the $3,000. G series. So it's the right move. Thank you, AMD, for finally doing it. And let's go ahead and talk about the 5700G. I won't be reviewing that HP Pavilion in today's video. In fact, I won't be reviewing it here on this channel at all, but you can get subscribed to our second channel, Brainus, where I'll cover it all over there. The link for that will be in the video description. Instead, today's video is primarily gonna be focused on the 5700G as an APU. I tested it on that system over there. So let's get to talking about it after we talk about today's video sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by ASRock and their Z590 OC Formula motherboard. This thing is designed for overclockers in mind. We're talking serious, top-notch, next-level overclockers, all right? Let me tell you a few things about this board. It's got 16 power phase design with a 90 amp SPS. It has a double XL aluminum alloy heatsink and cooling fans with a metal back plate as well as a PCB back drill and SMD type dim to help reduce signal and noise when you're doing that extreme level overclocking. It's got 12 layer server grade low loss PCB and OLED display to show you all of the stats that are really important such as your voltage and your temperature. All of that means you can take your Intel chip to the next level and it supports up to DDR4 6000 plus megahertz. But on top of that you have all the features that you would want in a regular motherboard such as the two and a half gig Intel LAN port as well as Wi-Fi 6E and then plenty of USB ports on the back to stick your USB sticks in but they didn't forget PS2 ports because again this is designed for overclocking so having that older standard means you don't have to deal with USB interfaces when you're liquid nitrogen overclocking. So big thanks again to ASRock for sponsoring today's video. Check out the Z590 OC formula down below in the video description. The reason that this chip is such a revelation is that it's an eight core 16 thread CPU on AMD's latest Zen 3 process, meaning that you get all of the benefits of the current Ryzen 5000 CPUs, but then you have that integrated Vega GPU there as well. This particular chip has a 3.8 gigahertz base clock with up to 4.6 gigahertz on the boost clock. It's not quite up to the speed of the 5800X, but we will be doing a comparison video of the 5800X versus the 5700G in a video coming forward here on UFD Tech. But it's an improvement from the previous Ryzen 4000 series APUs like the 4750G because it has doubled the amount of L3 cache as the 4750G, which AMD likes to refer to as gain cache. And then this one's also unlocked for overclocking, so you don't have to stick with stock speeds like you had to on the Ryzen 7. Pro 4750G. However, there are a few key limitations on this APU like have existed in previous ones, such as the fact that it's still only PCI Express 3.0, so you're not gonna benefit from a 4.0 slot on any motherboard that you put it on, and you can't have access to the full speed of whatever NVMe 4.0 drive you might pair it with. So needless to say, with all of those specs, with the fact that AMD is selling it direct to consumer, I am very excited for this chip, but, should I be? All right, let's get to the main event. Let's talk about how the 5700G actually performs in video games. We did all of the testing on this system right here. It's the MSI B550 Gaming Plus. We've got 32 gigs of 3600 megahertz RAM just to eliminate any bottlenecks there. And then we're cooling it with the Silverstone Ice Gem 240, which temperatures never got above 50 degrees Celsius because it's a 240 millimeter AIO for one of the most efficient process CPUs out there. So everything was tested at 720p low because that's where I really think APUs are still shining the best. 1080p is still kind of a pipe dream for APUs except in esports titles, but let me actually just give you the numbers so you see that it, it actually works. So I have a mix of AAA titles as well as those esports titles as I mentioned, and this is the best chip I've ever benchmarked. Horizon Zero Dawn, we got 53.9 FPS. Red Dead Redemption 2, 50 FPS, 
Fortnite was 164. In Cyberpunk, we managed to hit 38 FPS. Devil May Cry 5 averaged roughly 90. And Crisis Remaster, 76. Metro Exodus, a nice 69.9 FPS. Valorant averaged 215. The Witcher 3, 61.9 FPS. Death Stranding, 64.5. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 76.9. GTA 5, 141.1. COD Warzone, 71.5. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, 53.3. And Borderlands 3, 76.7. The vast majority of AAA titles that have come out in the last few years, barring Cyberpunk, ran at over 50 FPS average. This thing demolished it. I mean, you can hit 60 FPS in like modern titles with this APU. The latest Vega graphics are performing admirably. That Zen 3 CPU is good for everything that you might wanna do outside of gaming. But just to show you in comparison, let's talk about the 4750G versus the 5700G. How far has AMD come in a single generation. Is this worth an upgrade from the previous APU? And honestly, it just might be. Having that Zen 3 CPU is such a big deal. So let's take a look at a side-by-side -side between these two chips. Talking about CPU performance for a second, the 5700G is 13% faster at Cinebench R15 than the 4750G. Horizon Zero Dawn was 3% faster on the 5700G. Red Dead Redemption 2 was 17% faster. Fortnite was 34% faster. Crisis Remastered was 8.5% faster. Valorant, 27%, Witcher 3, 11%, Death Stranding, 27%, GTA 5, 20% faster. The only game that I benchmarked that I couldn't get to be faster on the 5700G, no matter how much I messed with it, was COD Warzone. Just no matter where I landed on the map, no matter what I was doing, it just was slower on the 5700G by about 8%. But for the most part, we're looking between a 10 and 30% improvement generation over generation from the 4750G to this 5700G, which is enough to get people to buy new graphics cards. So if you have a 4750G, it honestly might be worth upgrading for you because you can see massive improvements in some games as well as in other applications thanks to Zen 3 and again that refined Vega architecture. AMD has blown me away with the performance of the 5700G. I honestly love it and I can't wait for it to come out on retail so that you all can actually experience just how fast this chip actually is. I'm so glad that I actually picked this up up in an office desktop because this is just going to revolutionize what you're actually able to do with cheap OEM desktops that you can find at Office Depot. You're actually getting a legitimate gaming option. This is going to be great for the kids at home who have to share their gaming computer with their parents' office computer like I had to do growing up, and it's going to mean that they don't have to buy a graphics card to actually still play modern titles and not rely on things like cloud gaming. After I benchmarked the 5600G, I wasn't expecting to be as impressed with the 5700G as I am. The 5600G kind of went toe to toe with the 4750G and was better in some instances and worse in others, but that's not the case here. This is clearly, definitively a much better chip than AMD has released previously. For $100 more than the 5600G, I think it's a no brainer. For $359, this is the best value CPU GPU combo that you can get on the market right now, even when GPUs weren't out of stock. But again, as I mentioned, we're going to be doing a head-to-head -head comparison of the 5700G and the 5800X to see how it performs as an actual CPU when you compare it with a dedicated graphics card. So get subscribed for that. And in case you want to watch our previous video on the 5600G, you should check it out in that box right over there.